All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm replay cast. This is going to be a Zerg versus Terran. Let's go ahead and introduce who we have playing in this match. Representing Evil Geniuses, it is our Red Zerg in the upper right side of Daybreak. It is Estefano and his opponent in the bottom left side. I guess that's this is like a little bit of bias. <laughs> That was a lot of excitement for Stefano, so let me see if I can easily, or at least try to match it for uh, for this guy's introduction. In the bottom left, we have uh, playing for MLG 360. All right, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if MLG actually has a StarCraft 2 team, but anyway, it's going to be our Blue Terran player, Mashiro. So ZBT on the map Daybreak. Of course, this map has been in the map pool for a very, very long time. This is basically. Um, you know, this is just a good map in general. But the thing is, when good maps, even though it's a good map and you're playing it many, many times, it gets boring. So, um, you know, Blizzard is, is kind of slowly but surely mixing in a lot more maps in the ladder map pool. I know Whirlwind, a very, very big map, is now part of the um, actual ladder system for Blizzard. There's also uh, Bestial, uh, Belshire Vestige, another new map. And uh, the last one is Star Station, which is... Um, another new map. I think there's there's another one actually. There's Newkirk Precinct. These names are so confusing. The names of the maps. But uh, new maps, that's definitely good for uh, for StarCraft 2 competitive play at least. These pro players do not want to be playing on the same maps eh, over and over and over and over again basically. Uh, but whatever man, it's if you're kinda if you have to play on a map specifically for a tournament you're not gonna be complaining because uh, basically putting your career and you're putting your skills on the line when actually playing in these uh, offline events but anyway let's talk about this opening so far from our players if we look at Mishiro going CC first hmm okay so I actually really like this opening from Mishiro um, a lot of Terran players have been opening up barracks with a quick gas sometimes you uh, if you're gonna be going quicker Reaper you're gonna be going gas before your barracks and uh, the Reaper is mainly being used uh, in the early stages of TBZ just for scouting information. Of course, if your opponent, you know, does not produce links or his queens are a little bit slightly delayed, of course, that's very, very unlikely. You might be able to actually get yourself a few harvester kills. So we'll see um, what the change or what the follow up here for Mishiro is going to be. The barracks is going to complete, of course, command center very close to completing as well. Stefano is going to scout this out. I want to look at Stefano's vision. So he knows that his opponent go, uh, is going for command center first, and he was getting a gas. Upon scouting that, uh, a very good reaction by Stefano. He's like, okay, you're going a command center first. You're probably not going to be teching anytime soon. I'm not going to get gas for speed to, to have any sort of worries with any kind of early reaper pressure. So Stefano right now just really has to focus on his economy. As we look in the production tab, making nothing but drones. If we just compare the economy, actually, both players. Not really a big deal in the early stages, but I just want to kind of just see what we're at right now. 21 drones to 18 SCVs. We're going to see this uh, command center going to transform into this orbital command. So he's going to be double producing out SCVs here very soon. And once again, we really need to focus on the follow-up here from Mishiro. Usually you would see a, a good amount of barracks added, of course, which is more of a TVP style. Some players like to do that in TVZ, but, you know, it's a factory. So very common. Factory reactor onto the barracks. We're going to be seeing that early Hellion uh, map control here from Mishiro. Now, Stefano has been known since the Wings of Liberty days to just be the man that makes roaches. Whether he's playing ZVP, uh, going for like a three base roachling all in with a with a very, very quick max, whether he's making roaches to defend Hellions, uh, Stefano still at this point has not made a roach worn in this game. Now he has his timings down. I can guarantee you guys, uh, upon scouting a command center first, he knows when uh, the earliest Hellions can possibly be coming out here from uh, from Mishiro. Supply count now for our players, 44 supply for Stefano, 32 supply for Mishira, there's a the natural command center completed, still no Roach Warren, actually going for double gases here at the natural expansion. So we'll see what tech it's going to be that uh, Stefano is going to be going for, very aggressive here with the creeps, but I love this from the Zerg player, so many more uh, Zergs are actually continuing or, or starting, I guess, to uh, focus a lot more on their creep spread, very important. Um, especially against that early Widow Mine play, which is becoming very much a standard in, uh, in early game ZVT. Okay, so a layer on the way for Stefano. And he actually has three gas. I would predict Mutalisks, uh, but he's not on four gas. So I'm, I'm still thinking this is a possibility that we're going to be seeing Mutalisks here from Stefano. Maybe we're just going to be seeing 
um, you know, maybe roaches. It's a little bit late now to go into a roach warren, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's a double evolution chamber, so this is actually going to give us a little bit more of a hint to see what uh, army composition he's going to be going for. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Stefano decides to go for either a Spire or a Roach Warren. Third expansion has been planted for our Zerg player. Mashiro doing a really good job here of controlling the map. Banshee, ooh, ooh, Mashiro. When do you see a Banshee? You do not really see this a lot anymore in Zerg versus Terran. Terran players, when they scout uh, a starport, they're like, okay, you're probably going a Widowmine Dropper, or maybe you're making a few Vikings to deal with the Overlord spread I have across the map. But Mishiro going to send in four Hellions towards his third base. We will be able to confirm this third base of Stefano. Speed halfway completed. 1-1 one, one in the production tab as well for our Zerg. More drones. So Stefano has just been droning his butt off. 52 drones to 38 SCVs. There's that Banshee going to make its way across the map. An infestation pit for Stefano. Okay, this makes a lot more sense now. So upon seeing this infestation pit, Stefano is going to rely heavily on Zerglings and maybe infestors you see quite a good amount of um, of swarm host play in zerg versus terran but it's mainly being used against mech and mishiro is actually going just straight up bio getting stim getting one one adding on a good amount of barracks back home he also threw down that third cc which is again another thing that terran players have just been doing a lot in zerg versus terran but still, the map control is going to be in the favor of the Terran player 100%. 68 supply for Mashiro, 78 supply for Stefano. 1-1 one, one is going to finish quicker for Stefano, not by so much, but uh, not a huge deal at this point in this game. We're just going to have to see if Mashiro decides to hit a timing, uh, or is he just going to play it safe and just take a third CC and play a little bit more totally, a little bit more defensive, hoping that Stefano is going to be the guy to go for some sort of, um, of aggression in this game. Alright, Pathogen Glands in the production tab for Stefano, so it looks like we are going to be seeing Mass Zergling Infester. Still that control in the center of the map here by Mishiro. We'll be able to kill a Queen, Stefano. Uh, you have some good control, Stefano, but one Queen cannot kill a Banshee and two Hellions, but it looks like it's actually going to die. Okay. I thought maybe uh, that Queen was going to survive, but Mishiro is actually doing a really good job at controlling this map. Scanning, getting rid of some of these Creep Tumors. This is not a lot of units, and now Stefano is going to have enough. He's like, okay, this is not so much. I'm just going to make some links. You have killed my creep spread. I do not like you very much. And he just uh, straight up kills the Hellion. Of course, links cannot jump in the air to go ahead and kill these Banshees. But production tab, there is the Infestors. 1-1 one, one has completed for Stefano. Mashira will take this third base as well. If we look at the upgrades, both players actually do have their 1-1 one, one completed. Comparing units... 17 marines marauders two marauders okay so very marine heavy right now here for uh for mishiro it doesn't I mean it's not a really surprise you see a lot of uh heavy marine marauder in terran versus zerg you don't really see a lot of marine tank anymore just because the widow mine has become a little bit of a substitute for the siege tank they both do splash damage but the widow mines a new unit so terran players are uh, experimenting as much as possible here in heart of the swarm with the uh with the widow mine all right, Stefano going up to this hive, getting 2-2, two -two, still making infestors. Economy for him, 74 drones. That's a great number to be at in this point in the game. Looks like Mashiro is going to be able to uh, see some links. Doesn't want to have any of that. Of course, that, that, that many marines can easily take on these links here of, uh, of Stefano. But I like this hive, man. So uh, Stefano is kind of just controlling the map with the links. He's making just enough units to go ahead and deal with any kind of a counterattack. But this is a lot of tech coming out from Stefano. He's teching very, very aggressively. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be here once the layer finishes. Um, you know, he's going to have choices of Vipers. He can go into um, just, I mean, Vipers are, are probably a really good choice. Blinding Cloud is very good against Bio in general, but we'll have to wait and see what Stefano is going to go for. 118 supply to 148, so Stefano is actually um, down in supply compared to our Terran player. He has a good amount of Infestors. If you look at the units count, four Infestors, 57 Zerglings, 72 SCVs to 71. So huge props to Mishiro as well for being on top of, uh, of his SCV production. We still haven't seen any sort of medevac drops to harass the economy of Stefano. I would love to see um, Mishiro swing around a little bit here towards the main base, possibly the natural, to do some damage. But Stefano sees this army and he knows that he has to prepare. He needs to make something in the production tab. Making some banelings, getting some trifical hooks, of course, banelings speed. Links are going to be able to surround a little bit here. I like this little bit of um, 
I guess the Marauders are just great for tanking here against these Banelings. So that's some good control here by Mishiro. He's going to go ahead and move forward. It looks like Stefano. Is he going to extend? Yes, he is. He's going to attack into it. But Stefano does not want to attack up here. Of course, Siege Tanks would be great. But no, it's just Widow Mines, Marines, and a few Marauders. Stefano buying himself as much time. There is the Ultralisk Cavern in the production tab here for Stefano. But he is going to have enough. He's just going to run straight through this. A lot of these Widow Mines are going to blow up on these Zerglings. And that is so... Much damage here being thrown up by Mishiro. The Widow Mines placed very nicely, and this bio just not enough. Infestors, not the best fungal control. Looks like he's gonna throw down additional fungals, but the infestors are gonna get focused down here by Mishiro, and he has a huge supply advantage right now. 164 supply to 93. Stefano teching very fast. Mishiro just uh I don't I don't think he really scouted it, but his timing was just really uh, really well played. I mean, the Ultralisk Cavern is going to finish, but the problem is Stefano loses the fourth, loses, uh, loses the third as I stutter over my words, and now it's three base to two base, and this is not the best position at all for Stefano. Uh, two two is finished for our Terran player. I want to grab something here from Stefano. Two two is finished as well for Stefano, but this is just a really unfortunate timing here for uh, for a Terran player. If Stefano had enough time to get Ultras. He would have he would have been able to kill the army with Ling, Bailing, and Infester. But now we're going to see three Ultras in the, in the production tab. More Infesters. Mishiro does not care. He's just going to march straight towards the natural. Really good hits here by Stefano, though, with the Banelings and the Zerglings. Queens are dying left and right. Mishiro still continuing to make his way towards the natural expansion. More Fungals here being placed down by Stefano. We'll be able to do some damage, of course. There's a good amount of medevacs. More units just continuing to be rallied here for our Terran player. He's even making... Uh, he actually made another command center. So he's going to be on four bases here very soon. Mishiro squeezing in in the natural expansion. Of course, Ultras are going to pop, but there's a good amount of Marauders and Marines. Kind of stutter step here behind the mineral line. Of course, Ultras cannot really... They're, they're pretty fat. They can kind of get there. I guess they will, but... Might be able to clean it up, but overall, Stefano very much in a losing position. Looks like Mishiro going to stem to the third. GG is thrown out by evil genius Stefano, knowing it's over. Uh, Mishiro played a very good, very aggressive game, controlled the map early on with the Hellions, scanning, getting rid of some of the creep tumors, denying scouting as well for Stefano. If you're controlling the map as a Terran, right outside the natural of your Zerg opponent, it's very hard to sneak any kind of lings around. Of course, you can, you can scout with Overlords, you can obviously do that, but Stefano teching very quickly to Hive, trying to get Ultralisks, Mishiro... Um, I don't think he scouted it out. I might be wrong. I think he might have maybe thrown a scan in the main base, scouted the hive, might have even seen the Ultralisk Cavern, but just made a very scary army. And this is kind of what Terran players are doing in Terran versus Zerg. Marine, Marauders, Widow Mines, and very, very heavy upgrades. So uh, Terran players out there, try, try that composition out. Uh, I mean, check out this VOD. You guys are welcome to kind of just skim through it, pause wherever you want, and see exactly, um, you know, the scouting Mishiro does and what he's making in the production tab. Because this was a really, really, uh, really cool game. And of course, Mishiro, I'm going to tell you who it is. It's it's Zenicider from Quantic Gaming. He's a very, very good Terran player. He's not a Diamond player. I guess he was trolling Stefano a little bit there in the early stages of the game. But uh, yeah, so um, Xenocider, aka Mishiro, which is his smurf in Heart of the Swarm, taking out Evil Genius Stefano. Really, really cool game. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the cast. Make sure you to subscribe onto my YouTube channel, and that's going to conclude our cast. See you next time. Stay safe, good luck, and have fun.